Hello, in this video, we're gonna look at the IV curve test menus in the SMFT-1000. When you first go to IV curve, the first thing you're gonna see is this table. This will give you the nominal value, that's the manufacturer's data from the module manufacturer, and then STC is our measured value converted to what the module would be doing under standard test conditions. In this screen, we can also push the down arrow and set our passing criteria limit. It defaults to 5%, which is the IEC 62446-1 standard for IV curve tracing uh, modules. And if you change this up or down, that's just going to impact whether a result is a passing result or a failing result. You'll still get the actual numbers, but this is what affects the red X's and green checks. I can go back. I can also see data in a graph form. As you're doing IV curve testing, you'll actually see the IV curve populate as the test is being conducted. In this screen, we can enter the PV module. We can do it in a couple different ways. We can manually enter the module data using data off the uh, spec sheet or off the module label, or we can use the TrueTest software's module database to input the information automatically. I've already uploaded some module data, so if I hit the down arrow, I'll see all the mo modules that have been loaded into the SMFT-1000. Right now, I've got six different modules loaded into the device. You can load up to 24 modules at any one time. I can also add new. That's where I would go in and create the module based on the, the information that I have in the field. Um, I can use the F1 button to select the module. I can also delete all the modules out of the SMFT-1000 if I wanted to clear the memory as well. I can also pair the device with the IRR2 meter. It actually needs to be paired in the menu, in the settings um, menu, but I've already paired an IRR2 here, so off screen I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. It's going to sync with my SMFT-1000. You can see it's synchronized now. Um, I'm inside, so I'm not getting any irradiance, but you can see the ambient temperature around 21 degrees C and the tilt angle. I can lift my IRR2 up and the tilt angle will change in pretty much real time. I'm using the internal sensor. I could use the external sensor as well, and that would be reported to the SMFT-1000. When I go back to the table at the top, you'll see my readings from the IRR2, both irradiance and temperature in real time. Once I'm ready to create a test, and I would want to select a PV module first, I didn't do that previously, so I'm going to select a module, and I'm just going to take the one at the top of the list. I'm going to tell it how many modules I have in the string and how many in parallel. The SMFT-1000 can measure up to 1,000 volts, so that would be the number of modules in a string, and it can measure up to 20 amps, so that would be number in parallel. So I can go up and just tell it how many modules I have in series in parallel, and you actually hit the F1 and F2 buttons there to increase or decrease that number. So once I have that entered in, you can see the PV module is now checked, my IRR meter is connected, and I am ready to test. Um, I can go back to the graph, and once I hit test, it will start populating the graph. Now you can see this kind of bluish green area here. That is plus or minus 5% of the nominal expected results. So that's the manufacturer's data plus or minus 5%. When you do the IV curve trace and go back and look at it in the menu of the measurement settings, you'll see a black curve on there. That's the measured curve. And then you'll see a blue curve, that's the STC curve, that's the measured data corrected to standard test conditions. And hopefully it will be within that blue-green box there. That's the basics of IV curve testing, the interface with the SMFT-1000. Um, thanks for joining me and have a great day.